something needs to be done because our kids are out there getting killed. The city is hurting, you know, and it's, it's, it's like, what do we do? How do we overcome this? Law enforcement right now feels under siege and they're not using the laws and the tactics they know how to use. We're predicting more than 500 patients, more than 120% increase in gun-related admissions to our level one trauma center. Welcome to a special edition of CBS 6 News at 6, Crime 360. We're taking an in-depth look at the toll gun violence has taken in Central Virginia and the search for solutions. I'm Bill Fitzgerald. And I'm Candace Burns, live from Radio Hill in Richmond. We have spent weeks speaking with law enforcement, community activists, medical workers, and the families affected by this crisis. We start tonight with our crime insider, John Broquet, who spoke with family members of a VCU student who was shot and killed while taking out the garbage during a streak of violence in the city of Richmond. 2021, Candace has seen streaks of violence that's made headlines. Most recent was 10 killed and 13 shot over the 4th of July holiday weekend. And also months ago, it was the Easter holiday weekend where a wave of violence gripped the city's attention. The life changing after effects felt two hours away in Buckingham County. This little fountain lights up at night. A family plot. Very lucky that we grew up like that. A peaceful country cemetery. It's not where Cody Woodson's two moms planned on spending their summer, but it's where they find peace, a place to reflect. After their son, a VCU junior, was murdered taking out the trash on Gilmer Street in Richmond's Carver neighborhood on April 5th. His death less than 24 hours after a 17-year-old was gunned down at almost the exact same spot. Completely unexpected. I mean, Cody didn't do anything wrong wrong. Cody was very aware of his surroundings and he knew he was comfortable with where he lived. Angela Wright is Woodson's biological mother. Julie Woodson, stepmother. I think no. that something needs to be done because our kids are out there getting killed. Both women played important roles in his life as Cody grew and left for college. Woodson, a young man who knew gadgets and computer systems, described as a kind-hearted kid from the country with a special place in his heart for his siblings, other family members, and friends. Both moms say they'll continue to honor his legacy as long as they live. VCU has started a scholarship and for Cody's memorial, um, Cody Woodson Memorial Scholarship for Computer Science. Uh, they have set a goal of $100,000 to raise $100,000 to go towards that scholarship. So we are doing fundraisers um, and have bracelets and t-shirts and we have magnets and mm -hmm. multiple, multiple, multiple things that we're going to have to sell. And one thing that's a hard sell right now in Richmond is public safety. More than 60 officers retiring, selecting to transfer to neighboring jurisdictions or just getting out of the crime fighting business. It's been a cause of concern for activists like Ricky Johnson, who deploys volunteers to help in some of Central Virginia's most impoverished communities. We had to totally suspend because the violence got that bad and I cannot put my volunteers in harm's way. So that's, you know, we, every time there's a shooting, we have to think about that. Are we planning to go to that neighborhood within the next three weeks? And that's now off the table right now. Our Crime 360 coverage continues tonight at 11. Find out how a former Richmond interim chief is making an impact with his new department just south of the city. Working for you tonight, John Burkett, CBS 6 News. Thanks, John. The effects of gun violence don't just stay in the neighborhood where the crime is happening. The chief of trauma at VCU Medical Center says it's taking a toll on hospitals and healthcare workers too, the people who have to treat the victims. Our Shannon Lilly joins us now live with that part of our in-depth coverage. Shannon. Well, Candace, the chief of trauma at the VCU Medical Center tells me they treated, they treated close to 400 patients just last year in 2020 for gun related injuries. And for these emergency and hospital workers, these are more than just numbers. They're human beings. Things happen so fast. I mean, even for the incident, it just happens so fast. June 2nd, 2020. It's just one of those things where Thank God there's people around you that know exactly what to do at that point in time. Two Richmond police officers are rushed to the VCU Medical Center after being shot on Sims Avenue while responding to a report of someone with a gun. I don't remember feeling anything. I just remember waking up in kind of a panic. For Officer like Jason Scott, the night crime, is a blur. But... He's brought into the VCU Trauma Center with a near-fatal gunshot wound to the chest and abdomen. This happened around 1.30 in the morning. 
by 9 a.m. I was going into my third surgery. Multiple teams worked to save his life and his left leg due to clotting. He was intubated until Friday and would end up spending more than a month in the hospital. Without the trauma team, without the vascular surgeon that I had in orthopedics, literally all three of them working on me at one time, I, I don't think I'd be here at all if it wasn't for VCU. This life-saving work you will have to be 100% prepared. Involves battling the clock, requiring teams and resources. Our response within 15 minutes, 15 minutes, you have an entire multidisciplinary basically response to this patient. You have the, the trauma surgeon, the nurse, the ED physicians, the, the critical the intensivist, the pharmacist, a whole team that assembles. Dr. Michael Abutanos, chief of trauma at the VCU Medical Center, says they've had to ramp up the number of teams responding to keep up with the influx of gun and violent crime related injuries. The way it's projected this year, we're predicting more than 500 patients and that's about 100, more than 120% increase in gun-related admissions to our level one trauma center, which is just uh, devastating. Dr. Abutano says that increase in violent crime-related admissions began to climb in 2019, with a 64% increase in 2020 from 2018. And just when we thought things would be better this year, the numbers are not better at all. They continue to be on a significant increase. And that we're not machines takes a toll on doctors, nurses and emergency workers. We're taking care of this patient with all your resources, all your emotions. And then the next patient comes, then the next one comes and you have to stop, switch, be whole again, be attentive to the next one. But Dr. Abutano says it's not enough to just treat the patients. He and city leaders something we can't afford not to solve declared gun violence a public health crisis in May and are calling for state and federal dollars to respond to the emergency. Dr. Abutano says that funding would go toward VCU's trauma center as well as their injury and violence prevention program. Prevention is a major part of the solution as well. Because it only takes a few seconds to have lasting impacts. I just had clinic today. I'm seeing patients that were shot one or two years ago, I'm still seeing them in my clinic. It's a huge impact on getting this patient through the, the impact that it has on their families, on the society, on the community. That's why it's a public health crisis. More than one year after he was shot. I, I was just here a few days ago. Um, I've been here every single month since then, multiple times a month. Officer Scott is just beginning physical therapy and taking his recovery day by day. But I'm definitely hopeful that my body recovers the way I want it to um, and I'm thankful to be able to get to this opportunity because of ECU and how they take, took care of me in the beginning. If it wasn't for them handling it how they did, I don't think I'd even be at this point yet. And Dr. Abutano says one of the key ways that VCU is working to combat gun violence is through their injury and violence prevention program. Tonight at 11, we'll hear more about the impact of that program and why a Richmond teen shot multiple times says it changed his life. Working for you in Richmond, I'm Shannon Lilly. Candice, back to you. We look forward to that report. Thank you, Shannon. Well, gun violence victims are ju aren't just the people who have been shot. We are all impacted, continually hearing about it happening in our community and hearing from families who have lost loved ones can take a toll on anybody. Tonight, our Tyler Lane speaks to mental health experts about the steps people can take to deal with the trauma that this can cause. Tyler. Traumatic stress, chronic depression, and a feeling of numbness. Experts say gun violence isn't leaving just physical wounds. They also cut into the mind, heart, and soul. It's sad, and the city is hurting, you know, and it's, it's, it's like, what do we do? How do we overcome this? These questions keep Shonda Gaston up at night as she wrestles with the deep emotional toll of gun violence in her community. It's always in, in, our, in our heads because it's always happening. She says that all-consuming feeling of sadness motivates her to speak out against a recent uptick in shootings across Central Virginia. But she's not just speaking, she's doing. When it comes to kids and you're harming kids or kids need help or whatever the situation may be and I can help, I'm all for it because if I don't step up, 
Who will? Gaston frequently organizes events to bring people together with one common mission, ending violence, like this car rally in April following a string of eight shootings in the city of Richmond, and this recent vigil honoring a 16-year-old girl shot and killed in Henrico. But all these efforts come with the price to her mental health. I might just have to take a step back and I might need to go cry for 30, 40 minutes just to get it back together. It's going to be um, overwhelming sadness. It's going to be um, anxiety. Social worker and therapist Charlie Pleasant says people in communities where gun violence is consistent are at higher risk of experiencing traumatic stress. You will see a lot of disassociation that's happening at that point. You will see people that actually begin to shut down. You will see the helplessness, the hopelessness that comes up, um, the ongoing chronic major depression. The impacts go beyond shooting victims and their families. Pleasant calls it a ripple effect that stretches across businesses, community organizations, and even medical systems. What we talk, rarely talk about, even though the research is there, is just the trauma's impact on structural systems in our society. And the stress is heightened for those without a stable support system or housing security. Thankfully, she says there are helpful ways to cope. Talk with your friends and loved ones about your feelings. Exercise and try to stay active and advocate for the changes you want to see. Community organizations can really help you feel empowered in a situation that can leave you feeling very disempowered. That's what fuels Gaston's determination to make a difference. You don't know when it's going to be your last day. So, you know, love on each other, promote peace, unity within the community. Now, if you or a loved one are hurting because of gun violence, there is help available. Here are just a few resources. The Virginia Victims Assistance Network, the Richmond Victim Services, Rise for Youth, and the Virginia Anti-Violence Project. We'll also post those links on our website at WTVR.com. Working for you, I'm Tyler Lane, CBS 6 News. Candace. It has been nearly two months since Richmond's mayor and city council declared gun violence to be a public health crisis. In doing so, they hope to get more funding and support from the state and federal government. A few weeks later, President Biden said that cities dealing with increasing crime and gun violence could use American Rescue Plan money to hire more police officers and pay for overtime. The city has so far received 77 million ARP dollars, but they tell us they're waiting for final guidance from the feds on exactly how that money can be spent. We are considering a number of ways to use these dollars as an investment that will bring back not just a return on investment, but also a financial, uh, a social benefit to our community as well. And obviously gun violence is at the top of the list. And we're also told that the city is in the process of hiring someone to fill a newly created position, community safety coordinator. Just a reminder, our Crime 360 coverage continues tonight on CBS 6 News at 11. Our John Burkett will tell us how a former Richmond interim chief helped solve what could be considered a performance crime in Chesterfield. And our Shannon Lilly will tell us how VCU is working to reduce gun violence and why a Richmond teen shot multiple times says it actually changed his life. You can also find all of our coverage from today on our website, WTVR.com, or you can download the free CBS 6 News app.